Hey guys, Jason from Thinline Defense, and I'm coming to you from the magical land of Walsh's backyard. I'm hoping that while I'm here, some of that wizardly wisdom can spill over to me and I could bring you a better video. Actually, real wizards have staffs and they cast magic spells. I haven't seen Walsh cast a magic spell one time, have you? Is, is, this, is this pretty common? You get used to it. So today's video is gonna be the PSA Micro Dagger C1. Now the C1 signifies that it has a built-in compensator in the slide. That's the model that I really wanted and that's one I was focusing on trying to purchase so I could show off to you guys. As we progress through this video, we're gonna focus on the form factor of the gun. We'll, we'll show it off up close, talk about its features and kind of the things that I really like about it. Second part is gonna be trigger. There's tons of opinions I've read online about this thing. I'm gonna share my opinion and why I think the folks online might have it wrong. Third thing we're gonna to touch on is recoil, and specifically recoil mitigation. With that built-in compensator, that's kind of the name of the game. It's how well does that reduce recoil, brings you back to zero faster. That's gonna be kind of, we're gonna to touch on those things, the return to zero, but specifically wanna to touch on recoil, felt recoil at the user. After that, we're gonna jump into reloads. Now, again, stock gun, no fancy flared magwells, nothing like that, but how well can you perform reloads with a F PSA Micro Dagger C1? You'll see it's, it's easier than I expected it to be. Next portion is gonna be a return to zero. Now, this is gonna kind of be a build off of the reload portion. We're gonna see how fast does that firearm return to zero with good grip, that recoil mitigation from that, that built-in compensator, and uh, overall, how well does it perform? We'll close it all off with my pros and cons and kind of give you my recommendation. To start us all off, we're gonna touch on the form factor. If you have any familiarity with Palmetto State firearms, specifically the pistols, you're gonna be very familiar with the texture that you're dealing with here. Um, kind of a, a soft sandpaper texture, not as aggressive as the Glock, the little pyramid things that are on the Glock, not as aggressive as um, you know Springfield Armory or any of my Smith & Wessons. Uh, I feel like it's a fairly comfortable gun to shoot pretty regularly. Now, going along with the form factor and kind of want to touch on what you get with this gun, um, I had to buy mine in pieces. Frame was purchased separate than the slide, which was purchased separate from the magazines. It will take Glock 43X magazines. I have a 10 round magazine um, because anything more than that is super duper scary. We're not okay with that. Now, if you are in a free state, you probably can buy this with the 15 round mags. In fact, there were some deals that they were running where it was the frame and two 15 round magazines. So there are those options. If you live in a state that doesn't allow that type of stuff, just know that you can put a 10 round Glock 43X magazine in this and it'll function just fine. There were some concerns that I had, especially where we were in Ohio with the humidity that as I shot it more and more, my hands were to get sweaty, if that was gonna play a role. I didn't think it did, but it was definitely a concern of mine. Maybe if it was, if we were out there longer, or I was more sweaty, um, there might be an issue, but it ended up not being a big issue. The controls were really, again, very standard to uh, a Glock, if you're familiar with the Glock 43X. Now, the one bit that I wanna to touch on is just kind of how I have my gun, my thumbs forward, the left kind of, uh, my left thumb knuckle rides right against the, uh, the takedown, whatever you call it, the takedown lever or the takedown spring. Um, and the gun, the gun got hot to the point that, you know, not, not like a third degree burn or anything, but it was definitely hot on that knuckle only having about 100 rounds through it. So the gun definitely gets hot. It, it dissipates that heat out through some of those metal parts that your skin can come into contact with. An easy readjust for me was to just bring my thumb down a little bit, no more issue. That was the only part of the controls that I had any real issues with. Now, to go along with the form factor and controls, probably the most important control or the ones that 
at least that I'm concerned about the most is the trigger. How well does it function, the brake and all that stuff. If you're familiar with Glock triggers, I would say this is, this is very similar to you know, the, the brake, the take up, all that stuff of a, a standard Glock trigger. If you have messed with the PSA daggers in the past, you're gonna be very familiar with this trigger system. The, the look of it is very similar to some of the hinged triggers that you'll see in some of the like Smith & Wesson M&P Gen 1s. Not bad triggers in my opinion, but the look of it, the brake of it, very similar to those. Uh, I had no issues with the trigger at all. I kind of went on the deep dive after I shot it Again, not having any issues with the trigger. It, it functioned every time, but I was looking at what aftermarket support is there if I wanted to upgrade the trigger. And there are some, uh, the amount of work that you would have to put into it and the price of some of those triggers, it wasn't worth it to me for a gun that, for me, would be a everyday carry type of gun. I like the trigger as it is. I felt like the trigger pull was fine. The brake was okay. The reset was fine. Everything was, was what I would want for an EDC gun and paying double double the amount of the gun uh, or the same price of the gun making the total cost double for a trigger by itself just doesn't make sense to me it's not something that i'm going to do uh, but there are options out there if you are interested in getting one of these to upgrade it later uh, third part is going to be the recoil and again specifically talking about recoil mitigation with that built-in compensator now you'll see in the footage some of the footage where we we shot really fast um, we, we did some drills on specifically the return to zero and then just speed shooting. How okay. fast can we shoot the gun to show you how well that compensator works in mitigating the recoil. Now, as a user, not seeing the footage, you know, just how it felt to me, recoil mitigation felt fine. I felt like the, the way I was able to control the firearm definitely helped with the recoil. As I saw the slow-mo footage and some of the speed footage, I was even more impressed than what I was feeling to begin with because it made it seem like the recoil was even better than what I was feeling and, I, uh, and what I was feeling was pretty darn good. Number four, reloads. Again, nothing fancy with the gun, no flared magwell, nothing super special on how I was indexing my mags or prepping them. Uh, just. Again, the everyday person, if you were to buy one of these, how well can you reload it? You'll see that as I was progressing through some of these drills, I got better and better with the, the reload. Um, Walsh even opined at one point that the reloads were going pretty fast. I think it got to a point where he was a little impressed with, with how I was able to do that. I think part of it was just, I'm familiar with Glocks, or at least more familiar with Glocks than he is. That form factor just, meshes with me because I've been shooting Glocks for 10 years. Um, but for not having any special features, I think it really comes down to like it does with most, most guns, just time behind the firearm, get used to it. And as you do so, you're gonna get more and more comfortable with those reloads. Overall, no issue for me. <laughs> so going off of the third point that we were talking about, which was recoil or recoil mitigation, that kind of ties in with our number five spot, which is the return to zero. Kind of how easy is it to return to zero? How fast does it return to zero? That goes into the recoil mitigation, or I think the recoil mitigation definitely helps make that better. And it was great. I think my return to zero, again, as the day progressed and as I got more time behind the gun, the return to zero got even better and better. Um, again, Walsh had even chimed in at one point, and I'll probably tie it on at the very end, where he sees that and he says, hey, I could tell, like, you're getting comfortable enough with this gun that you're getting faster and faster. And, and that's exactly what it was. Uh, return to zero was fantastic for this little gun. Most micro pistols that I've dealt with, pretty snappy guns. This was fantastic, a great shooter. So to wrap it all up, I wanna go over my pros and cons. The first pro has gotta be the price. YouTube will be very angry at us if we were to say the price of a firearm. That's, that's a huge no-no, so we're not gonna do that. But if you check out the PSA site, you find the micro dagger. I think you're gonna be impressed with the price. Next pro, recoil mitigation. That little compensator, for the first time shooting a gun that had one of those, very impressed. I have four or five micro pistols. This, oh man, it's, it's a tough choice between this 
and my IWI Masada Slim. This might beat it out in terms of shootability, like how comfortable it is to shoot. I think that built-in compensator really plays a huge role in that. That's a tough one for me. Th those would probably be tied for number one. Really, really comfortable shooter. That recoil mitigation, re recoil compensation. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, last pro has got to be the, I'm going to include kind of the form factor with the controls. Um, I like the look of the gun. I like the feel of the gun. I think a lot of people online, they're really angry at this trigger, and I just don't see where that hate is coming from. If you're not familiar with these, like, like Walsh was, and I'm sure if you were to ask him, he's going to have a different opinion on this, but for me, I'm used to Glocks. Go I'm used to now. PSA daggers. This felt fine to me. The... The pull was fine, again, for an EDC gun. I don't want a hair trigger that will shoot at one and a half pounds. I want a five and a half pound pull. That's what this felt like to me. It felt like a good everyday carry gun. You can carry an appendix. You're not gonna shoot your stuff off and it's gonna function every time you, you pull the trigger. Yeah. And that's what it did for us uh, out on the range. It was just a great shooter. Okay, cons, and there's, there's one big one, availability. Um, I, I bought the, I had to buy this in pieces. So I bought the frame, frame came in. The frame came in so long ago that by the time the slide came in, I lost the frame and had to go digging through boxes to try to find it. Um, buying a PSA micro dagger C1 all put together. I was told that come October, you're gonna see these more frequent, but right now it's piecemeal in it. Sign up for notifications, hope you get you know, get to one in time and that you could buy it and have it sent to you. That's what I had to do. Frame was purchased. It probably took two or three months before I was able to buy the slide. Um, now, once I had it in and had it all put together, awesome. But buying it as a whole unit, you might find some difficulty with that, at least right now. So hopefully they bump up their production, specifically of this C1. I really, really like the C1 model. And uh, then that's not gonna be an issue anymore. But right now, that was my biggest issue as a consumer trying to buy this thing. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you found this review of the PSA Micro Dagger C1 helpful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thank you to our Patreons and our YouTube subscribers. You guys are awesome. We're so appreciative of all the support that you've given us over the now years that you have been. Truly, truly appreciate it. And thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below, let me know what you think of the PSA Micro Dagger, specifically the C1, and if it's something that you're gonna add to your collection. All right, Jason out. Come on, Jason, use your brain. Okay. Feels good, man. Note from me to you. Um, you may want to remember, I'll keep this on the footage, you're getting more familiar with the weapon system and you're getting faster with it.